This is my first solar stats video of 2024 and thankfully we're on the up after a miserable December weather-wise. In this video I'll be taking a look at my solar stats for January and comparing that to how it fared in December and also now since I've had the system for 12 months I'll also be looking at January 2023 as well. All I can say is roll on the springtime and longer days and better weather. I'll also discuss the payback of the system and this month I've tried to incorporate some of Octopus's other smart tariffs into the equation to see how the savings are affected. Based on this video that I produced which talks about how smart tariffs affect solar payback. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny Visola, welcome to my channel. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more similar content on all things EVs, solar, renewables and much more. As a reminder of my system, I have 16 395 watt solar panels. Six of those are on the east facing roof of my house and 10 are on the west facing roof. That's accompanied also by a Give Energy Gen 2 9.5 kilowatt hour battery and a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. And that's also Give Energy and Gen 1. I've had the system installed for over a year now and I've absolutely loved having it. For most of the year, I'm using very little from the grid to power my house. And I also love the flexibility and the technology that comes with it as well. Let's get straight into the figures and first let's take a look at the generation for January 2024. Thankfully we had no days this month where we had zero kilowatt hour generation like we had on one day in December. Check out the video in the top right corner if you want to know more about that. It was a little better overall as we moved past the short days in December and we had a total generation across the month of January of 89.74 kilowatt hours. And that's compared with around 50 kilowatt hours in December, so nearly double. As you can see, 34 of that generation was used to power the home, 14 went straight to the battery and 40 kilowatt hours was exported back to the grid. So the longer days are really starting to push up that export numbers now. The best day for generation was on the 30th of January where we made 7.08 kilowatt hours and the worst day was 0.42 kilowatt hours. So not much better than the zero we had in December but a small improvement overall. If we look at the solar generation for each month across the year you'll see the green bars for the generation for 2023 and the pink colour is for 2024. So quite a bit down again on last year's total where in 2023 we had a January generation figure of 121 kilowatt hours and i think that's just down to the amount of rainy gray days we've had in the northeast recently hopefully it's just that and we start to see an improvement soon and not something wrong with my uh, solar panels but i'll be keeping a close eye on that to make sure i also added the january stats to this chart as well although you can't really see it very well at the moment because of the uh, the way the chart's configured this one shows the best the worst and average days for generation and again all the values are down versus 2023 in January. Let me know how your generation fared throughout January. I'm interested to know if uh, yours was down as well and where you're located in the country. And if we take a look at the best day throughout January 2024, that was on the 30th, as you'd expect more towards the end of the month when we get in those lighter days. And the total was 7.08 kilowatt hours. So as you can see, the generation there starting just after eight but not really ramping up until kind of nine o'clock in the morning not a bad curve for this time of the year but dropping right off around about four o'clock and then not generating anything by kind of five o'clock in the afternoon and a maximum generation of 1.56 kilowatts at around about uh, half past two three o'clock ish as you can see the battery dropped off a little bit on the morning and then was topped up by the solar energy hitting the panels and then that lasted us right through way above 70 percent really so not much usage on that day overall a good day and if we look at the generation on the 2nd of january which was the the worst day 0.42 kilowatt hours as you can see not much generation all a maximum generation of 267 watts at around about one o'clock in the afternoon but still beating the eight watts maximum that we had on the day last month and again you can see the battery dropping down not really enough solar this day to keep it high so it's just dropped off until it gets recharged again dropped off to just below 60 percent on this day if we look at the grid import we had a total import of 151.68 kilowatt hours now this doesn't include my ev charging but as you can see 47 of that went straight to power the home 
and 104 went straight in from the grid into the battery overnight. So as I mentioned in my previous videos, now I'm on Intelligent Octopus Go. What I'm doing is charging that overnight at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. And then anything I export during the day, I'm getting 15 pence per kilowatt hour back on that tariff. So it makes sense to charge it overnight on the cheaper rate. So that explains the uh, grid import, most of the usage for that. And if we look at the home consumption next, I used 193.13 kilowatt hours throughout the month of January. Uh, 34 of that was powered from the solar panels straight into the home. 47 was from the grid to the home. And that'll have been during those hours whilst I was charging up the battery overnight and potentially running some other appliances overnight. And then also a little bit here and there for where we've kind of gone over the inverter limit and pulled from the grid a little bit. And then 111.32 kilowatt hours was battery to the home. Now if we look at the EV consumption alongside that, so this again is using the My Energy interface. And yet again, you can see I've circled the area there where it seems to have lost reception to my Zappi charger um, when connected to the Wi-Fi. Now, the router's not a million miles away from the Zappi, but there's obviously something that keeps interfering. Um, last month it was okay, but the previous months before then, I'd also had issues where it just had gaps in the data. And, but from the figures I've got from Octopus, OctoAid, and the, the Zappi consumption data, I'd worked out that for the EV usage this month for my Tesla, I'd use 384.18 kilowatt hours. And as you can see, charging there roughly every, between two and four or five days really. So not too bad and very cheap to run as well. In hindsight, I, I really would have loved to have waited for the Give Energy EV charger and then it would have all been the same equipment, totally compatible. And that might have helped this issue as well. But yeah, a little bit frustrating with the, the Zappi at the moment. And there's a few things I need to try. If we look at the January 24 grid export, I exported a total this month of 44.01 kilowatt hours. And I expect from February onwards, we're going to see that really increase again up towards summer like we did last year. 40.41 of that was from the solar to the grid. So this is, as I mentioned, I charge a battery up overnight. And this is really just anything that the solar is generating throughout the day that the house isn't using. As you can see, there's also 3.6 kilowatt hours to the grid. And most of that was on the 17th of January where there was a saving session. And that spike you can see there in the blue is me exporting back to the grid for that saving session. And while we're talking about tariffs and saving sessions, if you would like to move to Octopus Energy, it would be great if you could use my referral link that's on the screen now. If you use this, we both share £100. You get a £50 in your account when you join. And I also get £50 as well and helps me to keep improving the content on this channel. Thank you to everyone that's used that link so far. So next, if we take a look at the first month of the payback, I've slightly modified this spreadsheet that I was using for the payback to include the additional tariffs. Now, I can see this changing again throughout the year. As you can see, if we go through the figures, I've got consumption of 193.13 kilowatt hours and rather than split it out into the cheap rate and the expensive rate, what I've done is take my average usage throughout the month of January and that equates for 151.7 kilowatt hours to £17.90 pence for electricity costs throughout the month. Now that doesn't include my EV, which I've got further down. Uh, the generation was 89.74 and 46, a lot of the other Give Energy app said 44, Octopus County, that's 46 kilowatt hours, and that equates to £6.90 pence on the tariff that I'm on, which gets me 15 pence per kilowatt hour exported back to the grid. So as you can see, the cost without solar, if I was on the flexible tariff, is £54.08 pence for this month. The cost without solar, if I was on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, which I am on, but obviously I have solar as well, that would have cost £36.21 pence. And the cost without solar on the tracker tariff, which averaged 19 pence per kilowatt hour throughout January, is 37 pounds and 12 pence. And my cost with solar was 11 pounds exactly. And we also earned 4 pounds and 7 pence from that day of saving sessions. So if we compare the savings versus the flexible tariff, I saved 47 pounds and 15 pence. Versus the savings on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, it was £25.21. 
So as you can see, really making a difference in what you can save having solar panels versus just being on a smart tariff. And then for the tracker tariff, that equates to around £26.12. I'm going to keep basing this on the flexible tariff as that's probably the tariff that most people are on. Um, you can kind of debate yourself which is the right one I should be comparing it against, but I'll keep using that for consistency and just include the other figures so you can compare that each month. But that equates to a cumulative saving now of £1,445.68, which doesn't include the saving sessions early on last year, so it's around about £1,600-£1,700 now. So that takes the remaining payback to around about 9500 When I got this system installed, it was just under £11,000, so for just over a year, we're down to 9500 now. My car usage throughout January was 384 kilowatt hours and the cost of that was around about £30.73 on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. Diesel cost per litre was around about 145 so that would have cost around about £130.50 to power my old diesel car. So that gives a fuel saving versus my old car of just about £100 for the month and if we add that to the total saving on versus a flexible tariff that equates to £146.91. And if we add that to the cumulative savings, £2,342.89. And that gives a remaining payback of 8637 As always, I find it useful in the comments if you write down how you calculate this, uh, what you think the best way of doing it is, and that really helps and will input into how I change these calculations going forward. And on this last page, if we look at the January 2024 bills, we had a standing charge of electricity of £15.07. The total charge for both EV and home usage was £48.63. And that equated to 535 kilowatt hours. Export for the month was a payment of £6.91 for 46 kilowatt hours exported. And I made £4.07 for the saving session. The gas total was £8.43 for a standing charge and then £87.52 for the gas usage throughout the month. So that's powering my heating and hot water and that was 2,115 kilowatt hours throughout January. So not too bad. That's on the gas tracker tariff again and that's continued to remain around about £4 per kilowatt hour throughout January. So for the coldest month of the year I don't think that's too bad. And that gives a total amount of the bill for the month of £148.61. So when you think that's the one of the coldest months throughout the year, and I would have been nearly paying that just for diesel to power my old diesel car, and now that's paying for my EV, my hot water, my gas, my electricity. So not too bad at all. Anyway, that's it for this month's video. Let me know in the comments how your system got on if you've got solar panels. And don't forget, if you found this video useful and would like to see more similar content, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. It's totally free to subscribe and it really helps push my videos out to more people on YouTube and hopefully help more people on turn. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>